this piece of mail is going to improve my metal castings. That's right, is it a mail video or a shop tip video? Both! But first, we gotta open this bit of mail. Time to break out my unboxing trowel. This piece of mail was sent to me by S.W. Dweeb. Uh, he includes a note that says, make sure your spearhead is really sharp. I haven't sharpened it yet, so trowel time. Trowel's not ready to give up the throne yet. In three, two, one, you cut my fingers off. No, I didn't. Look at that. And the trowel, my trowel needs sharpening. You may have recalled, I said this year I want to improve my uh, metal casting surface finish quality. And one way to do that is using this dealie, I say, which I should have said in 30 seconds when I actually removed it from the thing. Boom! This dealie! Check it out. This is a tapered sprue former. Here it is. This is cast in aluminum and sent to me by S.W. Dweeb. He posted a video, uh, right when this one's posting actually, of him making this. So if you want to see him making this and using one of these tapered sprue formers to make this tapered sprue former, Go watch that, I'll put a link in the thing. Here's what I used to use to make sprues. Here's something else I've used. And here is out of the, the bronze spearhead thing. I just used a really thin uh, piece of copper pipe kind of cut, and then I uh, carved this a little bigger with a spoon. Why am I showing you this? Well, one main consideration which improves the surface finish is uh, keeping track of the flow, the metal flowing through the mold. Unfortunately, I don't have good pictures of this, but I've been using this which is bad. Very, very bad. This is better. Now, he got this tip from Old Foundry Man. Ugh. Someone uh, I will also link in the description somewhere. Old Foundry Man's been doing it a long time. He says use this in conjunction with a basin and ridge, which I have files of 3D print, but it is not prepared, so I didn't make them. But if you want to see that whole system being used properly, Watch in the future, I will use it properly, or go watch Old Foundry Man or SW Dweeb videos casting with, with one of these. Basically, the problem with this versus this is when you dump the metal in, it has a long way to fall, and it's basically in free fall all the way down, and then it hits the bottom and it gets all turning up. Well, if you've seen molten metal in a crucible or, or uh, as you're pouring it in, look at the top of the ingots. Uh, you'll see a kind of a film on the top, and that can be an oxide layer. So the molten metal reacts with the oxygen, and you get a, a thin skin over the top. When you pour in with this, that thin skin forms as the metal's falling down, and then it gets to the bottom, and it just googe in the bottom and turns it up, and it mixes all that oxide and crap, and also loose sand. It mixes it all up in the metal, and that'll give you uh, kind of a rough nasty surface on your casting. It'll also give you uh, some, some weak points inside if you have that oxide skin gets mixed in there. Uh, and that's, and that, that's bad. I used this initially because I had this piece of wood already. So it was free. Most of what I do is because it's free. Let's get all this crap out of the way. I used this because I can kind of cut it out of sand. It's hollow. But I also had this piece already. This I made out of a very thin copper pipe because I wanted to imitate this and I didn't have one of these. What this does, this slows it down. When you first pour it in, you know, sometimes even put it at an angle so it's not in free fall, it runs down. You want to fill this up and keep pouring to keep it at the top. What that does, it gives you head pressure so you have constant flow out the bottom, but because it's pinched off at the bottom, it's choked, the metal can't just fly down here and stir all up. So you don't get a lot of those oxides mixed in and other kind of crap. Also a good tip, uh, when you have it filled in, make sure it runs down this, fills in, then it runs out and kind of flows up into your casting. You don't want the, the metal anywhere in all your complex gating doing a lot of falling or turning or any of that. The smoother the flow in and fill up, the better the casting surface finish will be, all else being equal. Now, like I said, there's a, there's a basin that this fits in, and some other junk, and I, I don't have that. So yes, watch SW Dewey's video where he makes this. He will show you all about it. Now why? Why use this? I'm still going to be using this, these two, by the way, but probably as feeders. And, and what that means, this is where I'm going to pour the metal in. So I'm going to pour it in here for the whole thing. 
This will be somewhere else, probably over a very thick part of the casting, because that'll be the last to solidify. I'll pour in here, it'll run through the casting and fill up this. As the casting is solidifying and cooling, the metal wants to shrink, this will feed in. You don't want to use one of these, a long tapered thing as a feeder, because this, the skinny part, is going to freeze first. So you're going to freeze this and none of this metal will be able to feed in. So that's not going to work. Sprue, the, the in sprue, the feeder, two separate things. Another consideration when you're talking about flow, right, you don't want the, the metal to flow into a closed off mold. So having a, a feeder like this or even vents, so as the metal flows in, air can flow out the feeder. Air, of course, will go through the sand too, but if you allow a big spot for it to go out, you'll be a little bit better off. So, venting. You don't need a vent this big. I mean, a lot of people just vent with... The, um, somewhere I have a piece of wire. I have a piece of brazing rod wire that I just poke into the sand a little bit. You might be saying, I've seen you not use these and still get decent surface finish. Well, a couple things are, are the cause of that. The metal. So certain metals require this kind of thing more than others. I mean, everything is going to benefit from good good considerations to flow and good gating design and all that. But if you're, if you're doing cast aluminum, it's not as critical. Or tin bronze, not as critical. Aluminum bronze, which is what I made this and that, that spear that's... Um, that's in the basement. It's not even close. That was made out of aluminum bronze, and aluminum bronze is really not forgiving. So this, this kind of setup is very, very useful. And part of the reason that that casting worked out well is because I cheated. This is thicker, tapering to a thin, and then see it kind of thinly flowed, flowed down this thing, dead-ended, and then trickled up through the spear. That kind of setup is part of the reason why that actually worked. If I were just having the spear and this big block over and dumped it in, it would look really gross, which is why I didn't do that. So I hope this tip was useful and my rambling wasn't too rambly. I intended to do an unboxing of that TIG welder I said I ordered, but uh, it's not here yet. Shipping seems to indicate it'll be here tomorrow. If it comes here tomorrow, I'll probably stream it over the weekend. Um, and with that, uh, keep your eye out on that. And I don't have anything else to say. So go check out the video of SW Dweeb making this. It's pretty cool. He uses uh, one of these sprue formers to make a sprue former which is kind of like one of them thing within a thing blows your mind type dealies. So that's always fun. Blow your mind and then melt a bunch of metal. They, they go well together. I should stop flinging this around because this is, it's aluminum. Aluminum, you might think, kind of soft. But it's not softer than your skull. Your skull, and even if you're thick-headed like me, metal is much harder.